Hello, thank you for joining me for the Proclamation 2019 official bid training. My name is Amy Williams and I am the Director of Review and Adoption in the Instructional Materials Division at the Texas Education Agency. You will have two opportunities to enter your bids for Proclamation 2019. The deadline for initial bids is Friday, September 28th at 5 p.m. By this date, you must have submitted your order processing information form and at least one bid for each complete description you submitted. It's not necessary to have all of your bids entered by this due date. We will close EMAT temporarily to verify that first round of bids, and once we reopen publisher bidding, you will have until Friday, January 25th at 5 p.m. to enter additional bids and make any necessary changes to the ones you've already entered. We suggest you consider several things before you begin entering bids, including how you plan to ship your orders, which components will be included with each package, how much you'll charge for each package and for each component if purchased separately, what the page count is of all your print student components and any pages in the teacher components that are intended for student use, and what ISBNs you'll use for every package and component. Before you can enter your bids, you must first complete the order processing information form, which tells us who needs to be notified when a new order is placed, how you want to receive your orders, and whether you will use a depository. You will get to the order processing form from the vendor start page in EMAT. You will see that the address box is already filled in and you're unable to change the information inside. This section is pre-populated with the information you provided on your company information form. It is crucial that the email address and phone number listed here are accurate as this is the person who will receive notifications when new orders are placed. If you need to update the information, please contact your publisher liaison so that you can update your company information form. Next, you'll complete the EMAT Vendor Relationships section by selecting the proper option in the drop-down next to Are you using a depository? If you're not using a depository, you will select No and move on to the next section. If you are using a depository, you'll select Yes and either select the depository from the list or enter your depository's information. Please remember that TEA will only pay for intrastate freight charges. If a district places an order by entering a requisition in EMAT and you ship that order from within the state using one of our contracted freight providers, TEA will cover the freight charges. TEA will not pay for the freight charges for any orders placed directly with publishers or those orders being shipped from outside the state. For some of you, the term depository may be unfamiliar. A depository is an entity through which publishers receive and fill orders. Any depository you use must be able to send and receive files using the electronic data interchange. Although there may be other depositories out there, Archway is the only depository with which TEA has a relationship. Many publishers choose not to use a depository because they store and ship their own materials, and that's okay because you're not required to use one. Finally, you'll need to complete the order processing details section. The first thing you'll do is tell us how you will process your orders. You can choose between EMAT and EDI. If you choose EMAT, the person listed as the sales contact will receive an email when orders are ready to process. That person will be responsible for going into EMAT after the order is fulfilled and marking the order as shipped. If you choose EDI, you or your designated depository will receive an electronic file when a district places an order. Once the order is processed, a return file is sent back to TEA. Regardless of how you process your orders, you do not need to mail us paper invoices. Doing so will have no impact on your payment. You are only paid once the order is marked as shipped in EMAT or when the EDI file is returned. Once you've completed the order processing form, you are ready to start entering your bids. All bids will begin with the program level information. This is the information that identifies all the components and subcomponents as a package. Then you will have the components. These are the actual items that districts are buying. Sometimes 
you will need to add subcomponents, which I'll talk about more later. As I mentioned, the program, which I sometimes refer to as the package, is a collection of materials as a whole. The program can be ordered either by the number of students or by the number of teachers served. A component is either a single instructional material like a student edition or a subset of materials like a teacher resource package or leveled readers. Districts can order the component a la carte or as part of a package. A subcomponent is a single instructional material that is part of a subset of materials within a program. For example, leveled readers may be listed as a component and then the individual titles will be listed as subcomponents. However, please remember that any component or subcomponent must be available for individual purchase. So if something cannot be purchased separately, it cannot be listed separately on your bid. This is an example of a bid that does not use subcomponents. You will see each item is listed as a component. We have two volumes of the student edition, a digital student edition, a student workbook, a print and digital teacher edition, and an assessment guide. This is an example of a bid that does use subcomponents. In this bid, the student items are subcomponents of the student resource package. The individual reader titles are sold in packs of six and are subcomponents of the leveled readers. And the teacher items are subcomponents of the teacher resource package. To enter your bids, you will select official bidding from your vendor start page. That will take you to the official bid start page. If you're entering your first bid, you will only see an option to click Next. If you have already entered bids, you'll see them all listed on this page. You will begin each bid by selecting a complete description. Once you do so, the information from that complete description will be pre-populated into the bid. If you have a single program that is offered for multiple grade levels, you can enter a single bid for all the grade levels by selecting the complete description for each grade level. Now I will demonstrate how that will work. You will click on the magnifying glass next to Complete Description ID and select the appropriate Complete Description. You should repeat this step as often as necessary if you're linking a bid to multiple Complete Descriptions. After you've selected the Complete Description, you'll enter the TEKS coverage percentage that you earned at the State Review Panel meetings. You'll notice that the information below will pre-populate based on the information in your complete description. Each official bid must be linked to at least one complete description and must contain the components that were used to cite TEKS coverage at the review. You will be able to modify the component information that you originally provided on the complete description. It is important for you to know that districts will see very little information when ordering. They will start by selecting an MLC and then a program title. If you intend to offer multiple packages for each grade level, the program title must be sufficiently descriptive. If you're offering multiple packages for the same course, your titles should use a specific format. We've established these formats to create more consistency in EMAT and make it easier on the districts. If your package includes one or more digital components and you've already included the media format in the title, then we ask that you put the number of subscription years in parentheses after the title. For example, Texas English Grade 1 Digital Courseware, parentheses 1YR, telling the district that that's a digital package and the subscription is good for one year. If the program includes one or more digital and non-consumable print components and does not include the media format in the title, then we ask that you include information about the format and the number of subscription years after the product title. For example, Texas English Grade 1, parentheses, 3YR Digital with print. If your package includes any print consumables and one or more digital components, then we ask that you include the information about the subscription followed by the information about the consumable. For example, Texas English Grade 1, parentheses, 3YR digital, slash 1YR consumable. That tells the district they will have access to the digital components for three years, but they'll only receive one year's worth of consumables. 
If the program is a teacher system, then we ask you include the number of students served by that teacher system after the title. For example, Texas English Grade 1 Class Set, parentheses, 30 students. There is an exception to this naming convention for eight-year subscriptions. If your system will allow price updates to existing ISBNs, you should use through school year 2026-27 in your titles instead of eight-year. Each year, you will be given the opportunity to reduce the price of the through school year packages before EMAT opens for the next school year. Here's an example of what a district sees. They start by selecting the MLC, which is a unique code assigned to a specific subject area and grade level or course. Then they will see a list of all the available packages that will include the program ISBNs, the program titles, and the publisher's names. If they select a specific program, they will still only see the program ISBN and title, but will now also be able to see the program price. If they want to know what's included in a program, they must select the item detail. Then they will see the program description, system requirements, ratio, media format, and component titles. Now I'm going to discuss specific program fields beginning with the class type. This is a drop down menu that will include three options student, teacher, or teacher system. If you select student, districts will order the package by the quantity of student materials. The program must include student components, but can also contain teacher components. If you select teacher, the district will order the package by the quantity of teacher materials. A bid with this class type may not contain any student materials. If you select teacher system, the district will order by the number of teacher materials and will receive a class set of student materials. To show you what this looks like for the district, if you offer a teacher system or a teacher package, the district will enter the total number of teachers and the number of students served. If you offer a student package, the district will enter the total number of student materials and then request the desired quantity of teacher materials. Now I'm going to define some of the terms you will see on the bid page. The program price is the total price a district will pay for the entire package, including the teacher materials. The program page count is a page count of all the pages that would need to be converted into alternative formats for students with print disabilities, including the pages in the print student components and those in the teacher components that are intended for student use. You will not include any digital page counts because those will not need to be converted into braille or large print. A digital subscription is a subscription or license for digital materials that will expire after a certain term. If you indicate that your program includes a digital subscription, you'll be asked to enter the number of subscription years that are included at that package price. The ISBN is a unique identifier for the program. You are required to have a unique program ISBN even if your program only contains one component. The media format is the format that best describes the collection of the components on the bid. If you're using EMAT to process your orders and not EDI, you may add extensions to your ISBNs instead of assigning new ISBNs to each component. The ISBNs must conform to the following formats. If you have a digital component, then you'll enter your 13-digit ISBN, followed by a dash, 00, and the number of years in the subscription, which will be anywhere from 1 to 8. If you have a print student edition, then you can list your 13-digit ISBN, followed by dash SE. And you'll follow the same pattern for a teacher edition, replacing the SE with TE. Remember, this is not an option if you're using EDI to process your orders. The next field I want to discuss is the print and online required field. This field can be very confusing. The information you provide in this field will help us determine what materials need to be produced in accessible formats. You should select yes if in order for a student with a print disability to have access to the same student content 
As a student without a print disability, the student will need access to both the print and digital student components. That means even if we were to braille all of the print materials included on the bid, the student will still be missing something. You should select no if students with and without print disabilities will have access to the same student content by only using the print student components, meaning that when we braille all of the print components, that student will have access to the same content as the student who uses the print book. If you do not have any print components on the bid, you will select NA. Now I wanna spend some time on ratios. When we say ratio, we mean the number of student materials that must be ordered to receive a specific quantity of teacher materials. Districts will enter the desired quantity of student and teacher materials when they place order for packages with the student class type. You are only required to send the district the number of teacher materials indicated in the ratio regardless of how many teacher materials they request. Let's walk through an example. You have entered a bid with a program price of $100 and the bid includes a print student edition, a consumable workbook, and a teacher edition. A district enters an order in EMAT for 35 students and two teachers. The ratio you listed on the bid is 20 to one. The district will pay $3,500 for the order but the publisher is only required to send 35 copies of student material and one copy of the teacher material. In order for the district to qualify for two copies, it would have needed to order at least 40 student materials. It's important to note that EMAT will not automatically adjust the teacher quantity based on the ratio, so you will receive orders that match whatever the district entered. Publishers must verify that the district is entitled to the quantity of teacher materials ordered based on the ratio. If you choose not to enter a ratio, you must enter separate bids for your student and teacher materials. In that case, districts would have to enter two separate orders. You will also need to update the system requirements and description fields. The system requirements are required if your bid contains any digital components and the description will help differentiate this bid from others if you're entering multiple bids for each grade level. Both of these fields have a 254 character limit. But remember that districts won't automatically see this information. They will have to access the item details in order to do so, which will require quite a few clicks. Once you've completed the program fields, you're ready to move on to the component fields. You can update the information for each of the pre-populated components, and you can add components by clicking on Add Components. This will add a blank component to the end of your bid. You can also add subcomponents to a component by clicking the arrow next to Click to Add and Display Subcomponent Information. Remember, each program, component, and subcomponent must have a unique ISBN. You can use the same component on multiple bids as long as all of the component information is the same. Changes made to a component on one bid will change the data associated with that component on every bid. Districts must be able to order any component and subcomponent separately without ordering the other components listed on the bid. Components and subcomponents ordered separately will be sold at the component or subcomponent price that you have entered. As I mentioned, a lot of information will transfer from your complete description into the official bid, but some of the information is new, such as the number of print consumable years if the component is a consumable. You'll need to mark whether the component is a standalone and whether it's teak sparing, and if it's a digital component, you'll need to indicate the number of subscription years. A consumable is any print instructional material that's intended to be written in, depleted, or otherwise consumed during the first year of use, like a workbook. The number of print consumable years is the number of years that you will provide the consumable component to a district at the program price you listed on the bid. A digital subscription refers to any digital instructional material that requires a license for a specific period of time. And that specific period of time is defined in the number of digital subscription years, which is the time that you'll provide the subscription to the district at the price listed on the bid.
When you mark a component as a standalone component, you're saying that it is a print student component that either contains all of the student content or can be combined with additional print student components on the same bid that will together contain all of the student content if we were to braille all of those print components for the student. Some things to keep in mind. If you selected yes in the program field print and online required, you will automatically select no in this field. You will also select no for all teacher components unless those components contain pages intended for student use and all digital student components. TEA will use the information you provide to determine which print student components must be converted to braille, large print, and audio versions for students with print disabilities. You will mark a component as TEKS bearing if that component was used at the state review panel meeting to demonstrate TEKS coverage. Some things to keep in mind are that districts will use this information when ordering components individually to ensure they have all the components that were used to achieve the TEKS percentage that's listed in EMAT. Any components that you listed on your complete description and used on your correlations should be marked as TEKS bearing. You may choose to enter subcomponents if you have a group of components that could be divided into smaller parts. For example, the student resource package may be listed as a component and then the subcomponents would be the student edition and the student workbook. A teacher resource package may be listed as a component with the volumes one and two of the teacher edition, the assessments and the black line masters listed as subcomponents or you might have a component of leveled readers with subcomponents of each of the titles. You might choose to use subcomponents if you already have ISBNs for the bundle of components and each of the subcomponents. Districts may want to submit a component requisition to order all of the subcomponents at once. It's also wise to use subcomponents if districts would receive a price break for ordering all of the subcomponents together. Going back to the previous example, if a district ordered the student resource package and got a discount as opposed to ordering the print student edition volumes one and two and the student workbook separately, then it would be a good idea to list those as subcomponents of the student resource package. Once you've entered all of your information for your bid, you'll read the certification statement, check the box and click submit. If you're not ready to submit your bid, but you need to stop working on it, you can always click the Save button. Remember, you only need to enter one bid for each complete description by the September 28th deadline. We will close EMAT for one or two weeks to verify that you've done so, and then you'll have three months to enter any remaining bids and to make corrections to your initial bids. Please speak with your sales and marketing team before entering bids to verify pricing and package options. Speak with your sales and marketing team after entering bids to inform them of the pricing and package options and all of the associated ISBNs that will be available in EMAT. If you have any questions at all, please contact your liaison at 512-463-9601 or by email at the email address listed on the screen. Thank you very much for taking the time to view this training.